You know, I got two questions. Question one, you just get to see my hair, my alleged toupee. I've noticed a lot of whiff normals in the neutral, even when your turn is over. Is this a bait for preemptive players that enjoy counterpokes, or are you just trying to condition your opponent to block? So I've done a lot of videos talking about neutral before and like what you're supposed to do. The reason in particular with Sin that I'm whiffing way more normals in neutral is his normals go really far and it's hard to whip punish him for a lot of characters. He can swing across basically the whole screen and stuff like his 2S, if you look at the hitbox, the red part here is all hitbox and then where Sin can be hit is all of this back here. So the reason I'm swinging with this thing so much is that it's a good button. Now, why am I swinging so much? My goal with Sin is that I want people to swing at me. Ideally, I don't even want to initiate because I put myself at risk every time I swing. They could air dash at me, they could run up and swing with a big normal and counter hit me first, they could whip punish me, they can do all this stuff. But the reason I attack a lot is so that my opponent says, all right, this motherfucker's over there swinging at me. It's time for me to swing back. And when they do, I wanna whip punish them. I lead with like, hey, let me press a lot of normals and like stick a lot of stuff out on the screen. And then the second thing is, now let me stop hitting normals and then wait for my opponent to air dash and give me a free anti-air, wait for my opponent to whiff and give me a free whip punish allow them to do the risky stuff and then I can just chill. You set like a standard that your opponent expects and then you just remove all that and then you get to play safer, more consistent choices afterwards and then that makes your neutral a bit better. You stand at a range where you know what button they'll hit. It's one or two things that you sort of expect. Stand at that range. When you see their character move to start their attack, then you attack. And knowing how to go between I should be the one to attack or, you know, it's their turn to attack, that kind of stuff, it just takes time and it takes rhythm. Sometimes when you swing at people, you realize, oh, they just don't know how to stop this. I actually don't even need to stop. Sometimes playing passively is just by default better because your opponent naturally is probably taking more riskier choices to get in because they feel like they need to against their character. The same thing applies to the second question. These two are stacked on top of each other, which is very fortuitous. I'd like to see if you have some advice on how to approach playing Sin into Biken. My hair is gone now. If you're going to think about playing a matchup in any fighting game, the first thing is I did a long series of me reading old articles about Magic the Gathering. A lot of those kinds of contextual articles have great advice about learning matchups, not just in card games, but in anything. Essentially, every time you are going to play any matchup in a fighting game, ask yourself some of these basic questions. Which character needs to attack? Which character is the offensive character? Which character is the defensive character? You can probably guess, even if you don't play Sin, Sin is the defensive character, and that Biken is the offensive character in the matchup. Why? Sin has further range normals, and control more of the space on the screen versus Biken, right? She's a little bit more compact in what she does. And generally she wants to be the aggressor because, you know, she's pretty good at it. So that will give you an idea about kind of the pace of the match. And if you can figure out that, the next thing you can ask is, what are the things my opponent's gonna wanna represent that are scary and can beat me up? So the thing I'm worried about is her best approach options, right? I'm scared of her 2H. It's like a great starter, it's a fast approach. So for something like that, you wanna be a little further away or you wanna interrupt her with your 2S or your far slash or whatever. The other thing is they're gonna air dash at you a lot. A lot of biking players love air dashing. So being ready to 6P anti-air and not just swinging your buttons. The other thing is her far slash is extremely good. And to beat her far slash, which she's going to run up far slash a lot, what you want to do is one of two things. Either poke her as she's running up to hit the button, or use your 6B to catch her swinging up high. So if you want to start formulating a basic game plan, do not think, what do I want to do in the beginning? Think, which character is attacking, which character is defending? What do they want to do from there? Then you can start to dig into the nuance. What else am I looking for in the matchup? If she's doing Kabari, should I be going for Elkhan to go under what she's going to do there? She has parry, right? Is there good ways to structure my pressure to deal with her parry and the way she wants to try and defend them? Does she have a good call out to my Elkhan? My tool that goes into her Kabari and is a good neutral skip, it gets me in there, it gives me plus rooms, et cetera. Yeah, she has 2H, right? So what's my answer to be the 2H? Where should I be standing on the screen? Should I be outside of her 2H range, outside of her far slash range? You should be asking yourself those kinds of questions and then planning around that. The thing that I'll tell you is at a baseline, the more you know fighting games and the more you know your character and the game you're playing, the more those things are like automatically filled in. It's more the specific interactions between them that you have to figure out. The second part, you do a good job outlining your thought process as you run through stuff to help identify what makes you want to adapt, what you're doing. Cheers, thanks for all the content. The reason I do that is because it's really easy for me as a viewer to understand what's happening better 
if I know what someone's thinking and why they're making actions, even if they don't work correctly. And part of outlining the what I'm thinking of, what I'm looking for, what I expect, what I don't expect, etc., is to go over what the most common expected actions are from my opponent and me in the set, and then break down why those are good, when you should use them, when you should. And it gives you an idea. Like, let's say I'm playing Sin against Biken. If I'm like, yeah, this is what Biken wants to do. Maybe you don't play Sin, but you're like, oh, I'm a Biken player and I didn't know I could do that. That sounds like a good thing to do. Or you're fighting against Biken and you're like, oh yeah, she wants to do this, 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 this. Okay, I see. That makes sense. You won't always be right in your deductions and that's okay. I think as long as you're asking yourself questions and trying to figure it out, you're in a better path than if you just are like, I don't know what's happening. I'm dead. Listen. Minecraft Steve is banned from Super Smash Bros. Melee 64 Brawl and Smash 4 events. <laughs> Necessary for the health of the games, get them. Don't know whether to feel happy or sad for you, start GG. Block Tasty Steve, not like this. All, I'm next, all Steves. Hey, I'm not even a Steve, Sajam is my real name.